Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I know this is almost lunch, and you're really hungry, literally, then hungry for more knowledge. Uh, but uh, I believe just a little patience. It will be, it will be good one. I, I can assure you that. So how many people here on actually on B2B, B2B side? Like, right? What are the rest are doing here? <laughs> Okay, never mind. Let me start. So what I'm going to do that uh, I'm going to cover three major pillars right now which are changing the shape of B2B marketing today, right? One is lead nurturing, one is content marketing, and another one is social media. Now, before I go into that, uh, um, 30 seconds of uh, mandatory self-propaganda. Um, Get It Coms is a digital marketing company for high-tech and telcos. Uh, companies like Cisco, IBM, Datacraft, etc. Uh, we provide uh, consultancy, content creation, and delivery and engagement platforms. Uh, if you want to know more, we have a booth there in the expo. Please uh, go ahead and visit us and drop by and say hello. And uh, we also run an um, online portal called b2bento.com where all the resources, case studies, white papers we share for free. So please do visit that, check it out. We are doing a live blogging from here at b2bento and uh, do check that out. So without further ado, let me start with lead nurturing. So how many here at least familiar with the term lead nurturing? Okay, that's a lot, I, I expected less. So, so um, let me give you a very 101 of the lead nurturing. So if you ask any B2B organization, uh, they will tell you that they have a sales process. It not necessarily looks exactly like this, but somewhere related to that, right? But if you think carefully, the process actually starts much, much earlier with a marketing funnel. That funnel is much more extended. It starts with that lead generation, starting from this trade show booth, starting from a direct mailing campaign or email campaign or PPC campaign. It starts from that point. Now, statistics shows that 25% of those leads generated at the top of the funnel are rubbish. They should be thrown away immediately. And 25% of them are golden leads. They should be expedited to the funnel immediately, to the sales funnel immediately. Now, that uh, gives us 50% left there. Now, who are they? They are qualified prospects, but they are not ready to purchase your stuff yet, right? So what to do about them? And there, the lead nurturing steps in. Now, lead nurturing is all about guiding that prospect through this journey through the extended pipeline and reaching to the point where they are ready to buy. Now, every individual is different. Every individual company got its own purchase pattern, own timeline, and own way to processes and other things like that. So how to deal with this? Now, uh, that's the holy grail to reach, and this is the reality that marketing and sales don't like each other much. Even they hate them, so I mean, that's everywhere. Not only India, Singapore, or US, everywhere, the same story. So what happened when marketing received this top of this funnel leads, which are all the leads together, rubbish leads and good leads and all the things, they just dump it on the sales team. And that's a huge waste of productivity, if you look at it, because People spend a lot of time cold calling the leads who are not ready to buy yet, and their purchase uh, sales cycle might be six months, and you're calling them and getting rejected. And that's a huge waste of productivity. It should not happen like this. So let me give you a very simplified example how lead nurturing works. Right? So two prospects uh, fill up an online registration form or visit you in a trade show booth and exchange cards. So you have a named contact. Right? So after that, you send one week later, you send both of them a thank you email with some resources and contents and stuff like that. One of them opens the content, opens your email, other do not, right? So the person who opens it, you send a week later a web meeting invite. And that person opens that and joins the web meeting. And after uh, one week later, your telemarketer calls him up and have a discussion. If everything goes fine, you arrange a face-to-face -face meeting. So it's a very simplified example. It doesn't happen in this way. But with a short time, that is the way to go, right? So the person who didn't open that, one week later, you send the person a white paper download option. The person downloads, 
and you invite them in a web meeting, so on and so forth. And if you didn't open that uh, or downloaded that white paper, that's uh, another path. So that's basically, in a nutshell, lead nurturing is about. It's automating the whole branch process, treating every prospect individually, and mapping their journey through this logical branch process, right? Now, uh, and also that, uh, that comes to another point, then when you will decide when they are ready to purchase. So that comes, there comes the lead scoring part. So every activity this uh, named contacts are doing, you map them with a score. Now, this is all decided by you, by the way. There's a lots of strategic framework goes behind that deciding what should be the lead scoring process looks like. So uh, when, you, when you start that, imagine this. Everything got a score to it. The person visits your products page, plus 10. Person opens your email newsletter, plus 5. And so on and so forth. And also there is negative point. That is one month of inactivity, minus 10, right? So with that thing, your, this barometer is con constantly going up and down and until they reach a threshold where you can lead them to the sales funnel and the sales funnel uh, salespeople can get in touch with that person. Also, there are some interesting moments or aha moments. Like uh, imagine the person visits your pricing plan page. And that's something, an indication that person might be ready to buy and you want to hand him over to the people uh, who can deal with that. So this, uh, this is lead scoring. By the way, this is one side of the lead scoring, which is behavioral lead scoring. There is another side of it, which is persona-based lead scoring, right? When you fill up the form, they know who are you. If you're a student, minus 1,000 maybe. So, uh, and, but if you fall under the category and how close to the target persona you are, so that depends. That's a, another part of the lead scoring. I'm not going into that, but that's a basic of lead scoring. Now, um, this is very brief, by the way. Lead, lead nurturing is much, much bigger scope, but I'm just concising into very small thing. There are many, many vendors out there, but this is the problem I'm seeing now, now, right now in market, that is, whenever I talk about lead scoring, people talk about tools, right? And tools are easy, really easy thing. And all of them almost got similar level of functionality. What is tough is to come up with that strategic framework. Because all this scoring, all this threshold mapping and everything is decided by you. And that's tough. It's tough to make sales and marketing work together. So strategic framework is tough. Tools are easy. Almost all of these tools are software as a service. You pay monthly. You can discontinue anytime. They all work with any type of CRM you already have installed. So it's not a big deal. Coming up with that strategy is tough. So without further ado, let me move to social media. And I think there are, this is the 1,054th track of social media in this conference. So I will not talk into the subjects um, and talk about the subjects which already discussed. Uh, let me jump into something. Now, uh, this is not the problem to convince the marketer social media is a valid channel for marketing right now, in, even in B2B. I can see everywhere in the world, all the marketers are jumping onto this bandwagon um, unfortunately, rather naively, without much of thinking process behind it, right? And uh, so-called social media gurus are not helping much either, right? So what you are looking at that uh, every day, hundreds of Facebook pages, LinkedIn groups, and Twitter handles are churned out by the companies. And uh, only to find out a few months later that forget about the business ROI, your uh, friends and followers or fans list is not extended beyond your family tree. Now, that is the sad story. It means uh, how to, and you, you sit down and think, what went wrong? I was promised the promised land and all those things, and where is love? Why people don't read my tweets? Now, things don't have to be like this, right? So you can do some stuff before you jump into this bandwagon, right? Start with this. This is the basic most thing I don't see most of the companies doing. That before jumping onto the social media and asking the question, what I should do in Facebook, what I should do in Twitter, what I should do in LinkedIn, ask the why question before the what question. That why I should be in social media in first of all, why I should be in Facebook, why I should be in Twitter, that's the first question to ask. 
Is it brand awareness? Is it lead generation? Is it customer service? Is it everything or combination of some of them? And based on that, you can formalize your strategy rather than coming up with a one-size-fit-all thing. Second thing, I think this is another big question mark of every social activity your B2B business is doing. Where are they? So where are your prospects are? So we do normally two things here. One is uh, outbound analysis. We call that uh, finding out the presence, where they are present, right? So there are many tools available uh, online. Uh, one of them is Flowtown, one of them is Gist. Uh, you can uh, map it against your CRM system, and it can tell you how many of your prospects are in Facebook, how many of them are in LinkedIn and Twitter, etc. Right? So, uh, and uh, that's well and good, but think about that. So many people in Facebook, you know, any half decent people in the Facebook right now. Doesn't mean I might be in Facebook, but I don't want any marketers to get in touch with me in there. I might be talking to my grandma there. So why should I be some marketer ping me in that platform? So that there comes the another thing that is intent. And there is no tool in the world which can tell you about the intent of people in social media, right? But there is a way to do that, at least some subjective way. So we do that uh, normally ask the field people, the sales rep, the customer rep that ask them basically three questions in a survey form. That is, where are you, and where you think your customers are, and where you are connected with your customers. These three questions, and when you get the answer and do some analysis there, you get some feeling that, okay, these are the fields where, these are the platforms where customers are okay to be connected with the marketers or with the businesses. So this is inbound analysis, which kind of tells you about the intent. Although this is a subjective thing, use it carefully. Now, another thing you have to do before you jump onto this, that is map the influences. Who are influencing, who are talking about your products or products category? And that's very, very important. Who are talking about your uh, competitors? And who are more vocal, who got more followers, who are talking about your products. So mapping the influence, and that has to be that kind of granular level. If you're operating in multi-country level or something, you have to go in that granular level. That in this country, these are the set of bloggers, these are the set of people who are more vocal, these are the Twitter uh, folks which are screaming out loud, and they got this many followers. So and doing some analysis on there. I'm not talking about cloud, by the way, if you are uh, thinking that way. But you need to do that analysis. And to do that analysis, you have to set up the listening tools. Now, these are the three listening tools we use, social media monitoring tools, but I call them listening tools. So um, uh, there are multiple listening tools out there. Everyone got pros and cons and everything. But you can at least have one before even if you do the first tweet post a first Facebook message or blog post, put on the listening tool first. And know what people are talking before you jump onto this. Right? So uh, these are the three tools we use. Uh, there are many other tools, many good tools from India too. And that's very, OK, great. So um, another thing before you start, that is set up an engagement framework. Now, whenever I talk to any company about uh, having uh, engagement framework, they translate that into a social media policy. Now, if you look at the social media policy, what it is, it is a not-to-do list, right? Thou shall not do this in social media. That's basically it. But that's all well and good, but what I should do? Where is a to-do list, right? When uh, someone says something negative about me in Twitter, what I should do? Or somebody asks a technical question in Twitter handle, we're using Twitter handle, or in LinkedIn group, whom I should escalate that to? I'm a marketer. I don't know the technical answer. So if this engagement workflow is not in place, you're going to go into big trouble. It's, it's evident. I've seen many companies started everything. Oh, I should be in everywhere. I should be in LinkedIn and uh, Facebook and Twitter and blog and everything. And when the engagement level comes in, and they are just out of their water and completely everything breaks down. OK, so that's about social media. Obviously, social media is a huge topic. I can talk whole day about it. If you have any question, I can also answer that later. But let me jump onto the content. Now, this is the oldest form of marketing. But why I'm talking it as now its most important thing? 
Now, about lead nurturing, if you saw the process there, it's very easy to imagine why content is important. I'll talk about that later. But why in case of social media I'm talking about content, especially in B2B context? Because content can give you the anchor of conversation. Content can make you remarkable. And that is, a, watch that term remarkable, because that means worth a remark. You put on something, and then people can remark on that so it can go viral, right? You can't decide that it will go viral or not, but you have to do something so it's worth a remark. So that's why content is very, very important. That provides the context of the conversation in social media. In terms of uh, lead nurturing, it's very easy to understand, but it's very difficult to implement. Because imagine that path of every individual. You have to map content according to that path. That when the person is interested, you show him this content. When the person is doing a research about the product category, you show him this content, and so on. Right? Another big thing is in B2B, there is not a single purchase point. Right? There is many, many decision makers, not a single one. So you have technical decision maker, you have business decision maker, you have influencer, you have end user and all. Now, what you need to do that map content according to those personas too. So this uh, business decision maker needs this, 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 this content in this stage of sale cycle. So I can, you can imagine what amount of complexity it can lead into. That is, you have to map all this content and have that editorial schedule in place before you choose the tool where you are putting this marketing automation in place. So please, whenever you're deciding to go into this lead nurturing or using a unified, uh, seamless uh, sales process or marketing to sales process, remember that tools are easy. The whole framework is hard. So tools are really, really easy. Trust me on that. So I will, I will wrap up here and I'll pass it on to Neil, who is more going to talk about more on social media. If you have any question, we can answer that after Neil's talk. And uh, then I'm here anyway, so you can always go ahead and ask. I'm going to be really focusing more on the social media side, really looking at the B2B um, sector. Um, I'm conscious of time, and you're probably feeling hungry now. Um, so I'll cut through the marketing spiel. Um, Pi Media Services is a digital marketing sister company of Web Spiders. We do have a stand in the um, expo area, so we do encourage you to come and see us and come and have a chat about how we can help you. I've also got a slight apology because you will see, especially the people who attended my presentation yesterday on mobile, this presentation isn't as interactive. Unfortunately, there's no videos. That's because I've changed my presentation overnight. And because I'm sure you all appreciate how powerful social media is. You don't need me to put stats on screen to say Facebook is great, Twitter is great, LinkedIn is great. That's where you need to be. As I said, there's lots of marketeers out there who try to jump on the bandwagon because they know these are powerful platforms. So hopefully, with plain text... I will cover salient points, but points that are going to be really beneficial to you. So, social media marketing isn't just for B2C kind of engagement, but it's also B2B. But it is different. So, although there are similarities, you have to think about the community, identify your customers, and use various different forms of uh, engagement. It is different. When you're engaging with the business community, forget about your image. Yeah? Just focus on providing um, information. They don't want all the fluffy marketing stuff. They just want to cut to the chase. Focus on providing information, really making the other business feel that you are knowledgeable in your subject. You are a trusted partner. You could potentially be a colleague to them. Okay, I did. This is the only slide with stats on. So 
what it's basically saying is that B2B marketing isn't really um, appreciating the benefits that social media can bring. Really, social media is thought more of B2C engagements, and hopefully I'll touch on why you can use social media um, in the B2B environment and the value you can actually get from it. So how is B2B different? Well, it's a different sales pitch. As I said, uh, in B2C, you're actually focusing on um, appealing to the heart of the customer. Where B2B, let's get to the message uh, with maximum clarity but minimum um, spiel. Also think about the business focus. Yeah? As an old touched on, if you're, if you're um, one of your clients on Facebook, they don't necessarily want to uh, be your friend. They're more interested, if they are engaging with you, in doing business. And they probably want to keep that platform separate. Also, B2B can be a bit slower. But that's why social media is a great platform. Because you can involve more than one person who's involved in the buying process in the engagement. You can share lots of information quickly and easily. And really, the essential thing is B2B is more about lead generation. Don't expect instant sales. You're building a relationship, building trust. And also think about the platforms you uh, target. Um, Facebook might not always be appropriate because in my scenario, I always find that people like to use Facebook for personal engagements and they used to use more professional tools like LinkedIn, SlideShare for actually business engagements. And people do like to keep that distinction. So it's important when you're targeting, thinking about what platform you're aiming at. I'm rushing through this very quickly because I'm conscious of time, but hopefully um, I will cut through um, to the main points. So social media is great. You can use it for B2B. But what will I do with social media? Well, you can use it for various different things, demonstrating uh, your product or your actually um, service in um, operation, or even it as a, using it as a platform to train or make best of use of your product or service easily and quickly. The real power of social media is the engagement and the interaction you get with clients. So think about, they could be your marketing, they could be your R&D team. Usually it's clients that have issues with your service or slight concerns with your products, and those ideas can make a real difference to your product. They can help you really turn your product around, really make it the best in the, mar best in the marketplace. Again, it's also great um, for sharing industry news and also providing a customer service channel. How easy is it for people to engage with you? Some people feel more comfortable not speaking over the phone. Some people feel more comfortable having something in writing. And really, the social media channel in the B2B world is really about building trust and building relationship but also helping you to adjust the service that you provide and adjust the product so you can go on and be even better than you are today. But also think about social media for um, your sales side as well. So you can use tools like LinkedIn to help profile or find your targets better. So I was thinking, and I'm going to go through this very quickly, um, I need to find a good B2B example to show you and help explain it better. And I was thinking, who? Who is a good company? A real digital company, maybe? Oh, yeah, I know a company. It was actually staring me in the face. Web Spiders. So there's a lot of companies who will go out there and talk about what they do and how great it is. We actually practice what we preach. So you go on the Web Spiders website, you'll see there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn. 
And it's not sales spiel. It's industry news, what's happening, trends. And not only the social channels, because people also forget the power of blogging. Having blog, having fresh content on your website. When you talk about social media, don't just think about social networks. Think about blogs, think about ratings and reviews. And there's other, one or two other uh, minor companies using um, social media marketing as well. So I think, and Norm really touched on this as well, I think there's so many marketers who are so keen to jump on the bandwagon, let's get our Facebook page, let's get our LinkedIn page, but step back a bit. To make most effective use, you've got to think strategically. What is the purpose? Why are you doing this? What do you want to achieve? Also, do you know what success is? If you don't know what success is, how are you going to monitor if you're achieving your goals? Also, which platforms are you going to go across? Which ones are the best ones for your um, product or service? Where are your clients? And also, think about, okay, I've set up all these channels, and, and all, sorry, I keep quoting you because you were saying a lot of good stuff. Um, he gave an example of someone's dad, mum, and dog on their Facebook page after three months. Yeah? So don't just think about setting up the channel. Think about making your customers aware of that channel, aware that channel's there that they can use. Content is king. Yeah? Pure sales and marketing pitches in the B2B world is a pure switch off. Yeah? You might all of a sudden have 100 friends if you're using Facebook. Then all of a sudden you drop down to 50. wonder why that is. Probably because they're fed up of being spammed about, my product is great, my company is great. Come join us, we're amazing. But also, importantly, when you've got that platform set up, think about which department in your organization is going to be responsible for managing that? Is it going to be your marketing team? Will they have the product knowledge that maybe that platform requires? Is it going to be your IT team? If it's your IT team, are they going to go to Technobabble and talk about SCORM and um, all these different compliance standards? And the, another consideration is, have you got time to actually manage it yourself? You could consider either doing it in-house or maybe even co-sourcing. And what I mean by co-sourcing, I think in the social media world, it's wrong to totally outsource. Because no one knows your product like you do. But co-sourcing, you can train and you can work with an organisation who can deal with the day-to-day -day under your guidance. And that really falls into nicely into ongoing management. Yeah? It is really important that you keep that content updated. Again, we come back to building trust. If you go onto a website and you see they haven't updated some content for three or four months, what do you think? Is this company still going? Is this company really interested in feedback? And even worse, if someone has responded or put a post and you see that's left unanswered. So you've got to think about updating content frequently and also having a good response rate to people who actually use these channels. But also key and important is measure. Yeah? I talked about this yesterday and they talked about it in the keynote this morning that having a reporting tool is not measuring or not using analytics. It's important that you look at what's happening and then adjust and use that information. So really, you've got to know your objectives and know what success is first. The metrics that you could be could be any number of things. And there's various tools out there, and like I just said, to help you collect the information but then it's important on your actions what you do with that information. So just quickly, just to round up, a few trends to watch. Um, fragmentation. So you know about the main social networking channels, but we're now finding there's lots of niche channels appearing. 
talking about specific industries or specific discussion points, keep an eye on those. There might be a key discussion point or a key group somewhere that's actually very relevant to your target audience. Also think about mobility. Social interaction, the power of feeding back there and then, that is becoming more and more important. So to quote my um, good friend Shakespeare, um, we are advertising to our loving friends. So really rounding up quickly, some key takeaways hopefully you've took on board is don't just get a uh, social media platform. Think about the strategy behind it. B2B is different than B2C. So you have to be more informative, more straight to the point and cut out a lot of the marketing spiel. Talk business from the start and talk in plain English or plain Hindi as the case may be. So really building that trust, talk about numbers. Talk about how your product compares to competitors, your key points, maybe a video or a demo. Communicate fresh um, and regular content and make sure you've got people there who can handle with the fresh, immediate content and also the customer responses. But what I would say in the B2B world, it's powerful in the B2C, but it's also powerful in B2B. So please don't ignore. Don't obsess over numbers and fans and followers. Yeah? It's more about the quality and building the community. That will come. Word of mouth, that will come. It's better to have 10 people of quality than 100 rubbish. And don't use uh, social media for self-promotion. Because you'll find, although you might all of a sudden get a huge rise in traffic, it will soon falter and people won't trust you. 